the Starbucks CEO, our beloved Indian, got fired. Yep. And they then poached the CEO of Chipotle, Brian Nickel. And Starbucks stock went up, what, 20%? 22%. And Chipotle went down? Like 14%. I've never seen a CEO hire and firing had this much impact. Yeah. So it was a $20 billion increase for Starbucks and then Chipotle, you know, you could extrapolate. I don't understand why it's a $20 billion increase from this one fucking guy. Unless people thought Lakshman, who's the CEO of Starbucks. Is that bad? Is that bad? Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. All right, Kathy's, we are back with another episode of Group Chat, number one podcast in the world. And, you know, we're starting off with a pretty action packed week. Yep. Um, the real quick highlights outside of some of the news topics we're going to get into was Monday night was uh, Elon and Trump X interview. Yeah. Did you listen? I listened. I, I popped in and out. I listened to the whole thing. I mean, they went on for hours. I just had it in the background. And I'll tell you, whatever. I know it, it's very polarizing. Um, obviously, one group loves it. One group doesn't like it. The content. I think it is such an incredible way to communicate with a large group of people. Like it, The reason why I liked it, it was so fucking raw and... Everything in, in media is so contrived that like, and I like that it wasn't on camera. I actually like that it was just pure audio because I think just even having just audio removes a filter level because you can just talk and act. And because if you're on TV, like, do you know how many um, probably political candidates have been completely ousted because of how they physically reacted uh, on TV? Dean. Howard Dean. Howard well, his Dean. was sound. His was sound. Uh, but it was the man. it was the sound. Yeah, but like and the video. Yeah, the video was nuts too. But I also like if you think about it, kind of just from a business perspective. I hate video Zoom. I think I think so much clearer when I just do a conference call with the audio. And now that video is like kind of the norm. Yeah, I don't think it's as. I don't think you get the best out of everyone. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the problem is, is that like not everyone is video trained to like, for example, like in the workforce, like when you because I see your office, it's just zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, every, everyone's on zoom. Well, because like, why how can't do you, you do a conference call? Why do you guys choose to do video? Because the, the customers that we work with, they may no, want no, to no, internal. Oh, internal. I think I, I like that. I, I think it holds people accountable. How so? Like you're not jerking off, literally. I mean, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Josh liked that one. Um, I don't you, know. If you just I converted think... everything to audio, you don't know what's going on on the but other side. But that's what we did before COVID. Everything was audio. I know, but th there's a subset of people that work from home. Because I know you are very similar to me and I've seen you on a million conference calls over the last 20 years. Yeah. We both pace. Yeah. We pace and that's how we talk. Even even now, I, I'll still go and walk and take calls, but I might be on video. I might walk with the camera and my headset and I'll have that. But don't you think that's a little distracting? No, nah, I don't... I, it, it, it isn't. It what, isn't. Is, what do people need from video? That's I, what I don't get. I think it's the attention. The video get guarantees attention, but I think it's very different in the context of what I'm talking about with what happened with Elon and Trump. Sure. I think the purposes of like, I, here's the thing. I think whether you like the context of the conversation, it, I, I have to agree. I think Elon buying X was extremely important to just break normal normalcy on many things. And I think, you would not have gotten this raw ass moment if Elon hadn't bought it because I, I, no one would have done it. So, so my take is basically November 5th is going to be the moment if X matters. Yeah. Cause if Trump wins, sure. 
because Elon, the owner of the company, is clearly a Trump fan. I don't know if X matters to swing an election. I, I don't mean, think any one media platform. He, he, he posted saying there was a billion impressions. Yeah, but the, I mean, that's like that's saying also worldwide. the, the yeah. gun, uh, the meme guy from the Olympics probably had 8 billion impressions. So I, so I, I don't know if that means, uh, that's not a fair reflection of the platform. But you have the owner of the company, which is probably the biggest. From Facebook text, is the biggest platform in the sure, world. Sure, but from text perspective, like conversational. Yeah, I still think we know Facebook is. It's not even a question. There's nothing bigger than Facebook. Facebook controls Facebook is Instagram. And yeah, I'm WhatsApp. saying their properties, yeah. all their properties combined, control communication on Earth. It just yeah. is. But the and owner the of, of this, okay, call it number two. Yeah. Call it number two. The owner of the platform has made it very clear. This is what's funny about it yeah. because he wanted to make it like a free speech. Yeah. You know, I'm open for all ideas. He's clearly made this a right wing platform. And he's openly talked about it. Yeah, I, I think he talks about it all the time. But, but, you can, Trump, but, you, but anyone can speak on it, though. It's different. Anyone could speak because on it, but he, the owner of the platform should actually step aside and just be referee and make sure everything, all the ideas are actually discussed. But, he, but what he, he's, he's doing he, is he's pushing the thumb on the scale. Well, no, he's not pushing the thumb. Pushing the thumb on the scale is what Facebook did, is what YouTube did. They pushed the thumb on the scale. He's, what he's doing is he's the owner of the platform and he's like, oh, yes, I'm digging Trump. That's him personally and doing that. And he's saying, but you, you can't be a, an objective owner if you have one clear idea. I know, but Facebook and Google are not doing that anyway. So who but gives a Zuck's fuck? not telling you who he I know, votes but for. We know they was manipulated. It's, it's, it's proof in court that, that those platforms did not be objective. They're not. So I, I why, think, why do you have to treat I, them differently? I just think it's silly. Like, look, Elon's a genius. He's probably one of the best entrepreneurs in the history of the world. But what he's doing is kind of bullshit. Yeah, and I agree. I think I think all media is bullshit. I think CNN is the biggest fucking fine. horseshit. But so is Elon. Yeah, that's fine. I prefer. I just prefer him. It, I, everyone gets to pick, right? Like. People prefer CNN. Some people prefer Fox News. Some people prefer MSNBC. I prefer X. And frankly, I think the numbers are showing that it is a medium that people. I'm do just curious with. if it translates to votes. We'll no, see. I don't. I, nothing translates to votes at the end of the day. I mean, the the two of the squad members that got that got handily beaten in in their primaries have, got, have no followers on X. Zero. Zero. They literally have 5,000 followers. The two of the squad members that got, that got beaten in primaries. So it's just about money and it's about influence and it's about other things. Yeah. What, what we, we have to realize is that, and we know this because sh social media gets amplified, but it's not the true feeling of how people feel. Like what they yeah, do. We've been saying this forever that social media is just a, a, it's fun. Yeah. But it's actually not a reflection of the world. Yeah, of course. Because it's like, if you were to go on X you would think Kamala Harris has zero shot, but then you look at the polls and yeah. it's a dead heat. Yeah. And if you go on CNN, you would say Donald Trump has no shot. Right. All media. Yeah. Well, I just don't want it to be a, a singling out of X because I don't think that's fair. I think all media platforms are showcasing what they think would be the best outcome for their media network. Yeah. And I, I think it, it's going to be a dead heat and yeah, we'll course. find out. I don't think anyone, even if it was still Biden, it was going to come down no, to a few I don't states. Think so. I think he was toast. Yeah, but I still think in in the amount of even as the woke on the podcast, and I think Biden that, was smoked. Yeah, and and the irony is, is Kamala Harris is arguably a worse candidate and more incompetent. She's just younger and can speak. Yeah, that's it. And we're unclear if she can speak because she's not done off the cuff interview yet. I, I, I would. She should. Elon offered for her to go on. She should go on. I think it would be great. I actually think she would get more momentum from that than anything else because then be like, I don't know if it's a it's a smart move. Like your 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 job is to win, not to please the public. Yeah, I mean, she should not debate. Well, she is right. Yeah, that she should not do. I don't think anyone thinks she's going to win that debate. She may hold her own, but she may not win. I think she'll be prepped enough. What it's September fourth or tenth or something. It's two weeks. August 14th. Yeah. Three weeks. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see. I don't think she, I agree. If to, to win, 
she should disappear. Because this guy's going to be on press every single day. And, you know, he's going to piss someone off every single day. So it's pretty easy. I, I think it's funny because I know the youth have all turned to Trump. Yeah. But they don't vote. Yeah. Well, the same thing with Kamala. Like, she's a brat. None of the people who are calling her a brat are going to vote. Yes. So they're both irrelevant. Yeah. Like, the 18 to 35, I know Trump has, like, made so many headwinds. In men. men. Young men. But anyways, the youth... Full Send Podcast, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. I think with young men, Trump made, he's a pop culture icon for young men. A hundred percent. I don't think. And they won't vote. That's, that's the yeah, interesting the, thing. You, you would have to see, like, I, 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 want, I hope they track that, like specifically young men Republicans versus young men Democrats. If any, the, the I, would, in I would suspect, this is total speculation, that young men Democrats actually show up and young men Republicans that are kind of Trump guys love to do the social media thing, like bravado, like I'm an asshole, I'm a dickhead, whatever. Yeah. And they're going to sleep in. I, I think finding young men Democrats is very hard. I, 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 and I'll My tell guy you, in Atlanta. I, I, I'll tell you why. He's, I think he's, he's charging them up. Who? The guy that was at the Harris uh, campaign that did the Kendrick dance that went viral. Yeah, he's not inspiring any young men. Let's just be honest. That's not, he's inspiring people, but not young men. And I think- I don't think it matters to inspire 18 to 35. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I think that and people that vote are 55 years old. Yeah. Like those are the people that vote. Like who's actually going to wake up and go vote? I know. I am. I've been voting since I was 18. You're 43 years old. And I've been voting for 25 years. You said you're not voting this year. I No, I said I'm not voting for Donald Trump or Joe Biden. So now you have Kamala Harris. Definitely not voting for her. <laughs> I, I will, if I have to click a box so, today. Okay, so I think. I will vote RFK. If you were to pull your office right now, right? You have like 100 young people. Yeah. Under 35, mostly. I'd say 75% there. How many are going to vote? I'd say 25%. That's low. Yeah. I mean, so that's 25. Well, but that's America. America is 25%. 100 and well, how many people voted last election? 100 million people? Uh, 110, probably. Yeah, 110 million. It's nothing. Uh, we have 400 million people. Yeah. That's, th that's a reflection of probably, you know, the entire country. Most people don't vote. Yeah. Most people don't want to wake up and go. I don't even, I mean, they, it's, I mean, they're, you have three weeks awake. to do it. They're, they're awake. They just don't care. And rightfully so. I don't think it makes a difference. Like, I don't believe that anything is going to change with either person as president. It's just, do you feel more comfortable with a certain person than another person? That's it. No, they appoint federal court judges, Supreme Court justices, like who knows who's going to roll off on this. Well, they didn't care last election or two elections ago because Hillary got smoked. Oh, well, that was a very different that's the electoral college. Yeah. It's very different. But that's the... Because she won the popular vote. But we know that's not a reflection of how you win in this country. The electoral yeah, college is not changing. I know. And it, it's a interestingly flawed system, in my opinion. But no one's trying to f change it. Democrats no one's mentioned it. Democrats are Republicans. No, because it's actually... It's, it's a good system if you know how to manipulate it. Yeah. You don't need the popular vote to win the presidency. But doesn't that sound counterintuitive? I, clearly it doesn't. Both parties thinks it's a good idea. But why? Because you can manipulate fucking areas. They know like these like, guys. Why do five states dictate the most popular states and how they run? Meaning New York, California, Florida, Texas, Texas. These are like the biggest states in the country, but we leave it to Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, Vegas, Pennsylvania. The heartland. How many people voted? I couldn't get a straight answer. I think it's, it's, all, it's fake. It's yeah. stolen. But I, I think it's, it's, it's something to be discussed why five states dictate the election every four years. And this is not a Republican or Democratic stance. It's just weird. I think they like that. It's easier to control. It's easier to control two states, three states. It's hard to campaign the whole country. It's a real effort.
because we know campaigning requires you to go in person because you have to fundraise. It is very difficult. And, you know, these candidates are not young spring chickens. But why hasn't anyone brought that up? Why? It, they like it that way. The powers that be want, it's so much easier to manipulate Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan than it is to manipulate 50 states. Both parties like that. They just want five states. They're like, okay, we could put our boots on the ground in those five states and figure out how to we eat go to, uh, Both parties go to California, get all the money. New York. And New York. And Florida, Texas. Those are their money in well, those four states. And then they just go and spend it all in five states. Five states. I haven't seen an ad. I have TV on all day um, in the background. I, I, I got served Kamala Harris ads during Olympics. On uh, NBC? Yeah. Like many. That's just to get donations. They don't care about your vote. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, but I, I mean, they were serving ads, which is frankly a waste of money. I mean, I get 10 emails a day from the Harris Waltz campaign. They all say I, D. I don't know why. You know what's I get funny? D. I get mom, mom's name and dad's name. That's on my text messages because I don't think they know whose phone number is who. So they're just throwing out these. I get, hey, D, can you donate to yeah. Kamala Harris's campaign? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not D. It's, it's insane. Um, but I think that the big news will still be come November. I do think it's inflation more so than even unemployment, more so than anything. The, the, uh, the CPI came in at 2.9%. 2, 2 some people are expecting 2.9%. Some people were expecting 3%. I want to tell you how stupid, like, I think I hate Time Magazine. This was literally their headline. It's just insane that like, this is, they basically, I can't find the exact headline, but it was like, inflation is cooling, but prices are not going down. Here's why. No, in, there's still inflation. 2.9% is plus 2.9%. Off a pretty high base. Off a pretty high base. And so people like, are people not realizing that plus 2.9% mean the prices are still going up? Yep. They're not going down. That is the fundamental problem. We plus the fact that the market is cheering on plus 2.9% is a joke. I, if I'm the Federal Reserve, you cannot cut rates. They're cutting rates. They, I know they are. They shouldn't. The inflation is not down. But the inflation's because of other reasons. But it doesn't matter. You, they, they want pain in the market. They want pain in America. You, you, the consumer demand has not collapsed. So there's a 60% on the betting market, 60%, 75 to 100 basis points. In September? By the end of the year. I think that, look, the reality is they say presidents don't have an impact on Federal Reserve. It's kind of foolish not to cut before the election. If, you know, if you're the Democrats and have any, you know, you got a sex tape of Powell, this is the time to pull it out because you want the, you want an interest rate cut going into the election. Yeah, I think uh, interest rates are definitely going to get cut, whether it's 25, 50, 75, 100 basis points. We don't know. But the betting market's saying 75 to 100 basis points. And I think it's indicative of like, there's going to be two Americas. You're going to have people, wage workers that are screwed because inflation still won't be slayed. Yeah. And then you'll have the equity markets rip as soon as interest rates get cut and you get... I'm mean, already ripping in anticipation. And so it, it's similar to 2008. We lived through that as adults. The real economy sucked, but the stock market ripped. Yeah. And I well, think I, that's going to be the same thing. the stock market and the economy have nothing to do with each other. Agree. And so you're going to see all these headline numbers like NASDAQ all time. I mean, NASDAQ... Sure, Sunday, because of the yen trade, like kind of crashed a little bit, but it's it's been on fire. Yeah, the last week. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what happened today, but... No, it's up. It was up like two and a half percent. Today? Yes. No, it ended a flat today. Oh, did it? So midday was up two and a half percent. Anyways, yeah. but 
the point is the stock market and the real economy are two separate things. And I agree. Average people are going to get screwed. And unemployment's going to be probably inching up. Credit card debt's going to, it's already at all time high. Yep. And I just assume government's going to step in with some programs. Why? They've never stepped in the past in a recession. You just let people suffer. That's what they do. You can't keep that's that's like socialism. Yeah, I, I, I it's just not it's not the right thing from an economic third, standpoint. A third of the GDP is government spend. Yeah, that's bad. It's very bad. We are government spending during the COVID era just exploded. Yeah, and now everyone's addicted to it, and people are getting fat off of it, and we have all this waste in the federal government that we can't cut now. No, you can't cut it. That's a, it's a problem. No, no, no. It's it's hundred percent problem. I know it's a structural. Like if you were to just objectively look at it, you'd say like, oh, this country's bankrupt. This country doesn't stand a chance. But in reality, we're all going to be fine. Yeah, I I don't think we are um, at some systemic risk of full collapse of the U.S. economy and government. Like I don't think anyone believes that nonsense. Um, I think people are going to pass the fear because it's, if you just look at it logically, yeah, you can make that argument, but that's not how the world works, yeah. right? There's too many people globally that are invested in making sure everyone else stays propped up, right? Like we don't want China to collapse. Same way China doesn't want U.S. to collapse. They can't. The same way U.S. doesn't want Japan to collapse. We're all kind of intertwined. And so it's in everyone's best interest to prop each other up and keep perpetrating the fraud. Uh, but like... So does it beg the question, does any of this matter? Maybe not. It matters if you don't have money. Yes. If like, you don't have money and you need to go to the grocery store and your bill's three Yeah, because I think, I think, I don't, I like, you don't have to experience inflation. And so it doesn't bother you or I. Inflation is fucking out of control in America. And it's never been like this in a very, very long time. Like the food inflation, the insurance inflation, and it's not, there's no sign of it going down. It's cooling. It's 2.9%. We can't keep going up in prices. 2.9% times 12 months is not a good number. But that's the number they wanted. No, they want it. But it, 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 we're so far gone on inflation. Like, I don't think so, in order, the only thing that'll change is if interest rates get cut. Sure. Everyone now has a cut. There's a little bit of breathing room, but then the spending will start again because they have breathing room and the inflation will go back up. So the reality is you kind of need this like cleansing because 2008 what happened was like it was just full on destruction because yeah. of home uh, home home prices right mortgages and home prices caused full destruction for so many american families and that was a horrific thing and set back like many generations for a lot of people like ruined families in america that was the time the government should have fucking stepped in instead the government stepped in and helped the fucking banks they should have backstopped the people's mortgages. If you yes. wanted to actually do something right, that's what you, you instead we backstop the banks, make sure they're good. They backstop the plumbing of the economy. Okay, if you want to well, like think about the plumbers it. Plumbers got fucked. The plumbers were swimming in shit. No, the plumbing actually got fixed. All the banks, the government made the plumbers, money. Plumbers, meaning the fucking average person, yeah. got screwed. 100%. 2008, like when you talk to like People that were children at that 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 point, they were. I've I've talked to people that were like fourteen at that age, and they were saying like their families fell apart. Dad lost job, mom lost job, lost their home, moved back to their grandparents. People's lives were completely ruined. Yeah, and so you're talking about the Fed, the government should do something now. No, like we didn't do it then, and that was the time to do it. Oh eight was the time. Oh eight financially for the average American was way worse than COVID way fucking worse. I agree with that for sure. I think in 08, 
if you go in hindsight, they should have backstopped the banks and they should have backstopped the consumer. They should have backstopped people who got fucked on their house. Yeah, yeah. Like giving them a plan to stay in their home. That was the problem I had with 08 more so than anything. And I think clearly during COVID, we backstopped everybody. Do you think anyone revisionist history even talks about it? I haven't heard of one person. Well, not everyone is as smart as I am because I'd be, I'll, I'll think <laughs> about these things. These fucking cocksuckers on Wall Street are not thinking about anything. But They're even about after the next the, kill, even after the big short, no one came out with like, hey, this is how we should have handled the weight because they don't care about the average person. This is why I to me, the thing that bugs me the most is the inflation. I think it's completely out of control. So how much of the inflation is actually within our control and out of our control? Okay, food inflation. Food inflation is out of our control. Insurance. That's the worst thing, perpetrator. But cars are down. Car insurance is out of control. But actually leasing a car. So I have a car that is up for lease. Yeah. September 15th. I get a call every single day. And I'm just like waiting them out. Because he's like, I've got a great deal for you. Got a great deal sure, for you. Sure, but the insurance, for- you have to have insurance too. Metro Mile. The Metro Mile is very expensive, just so you know. for You think you're getting a deal because you don't really drive, but per mile, you're getting ripped off. I don't think so. It's also very convenient. It's convenient, but it's not a good deal. There's cheaper insurance policies out there. I'm telling you, car insurance is completely out of control. But those are why is it all, why isn't food within our control? Uh, that's climate. Eggs? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't believe all this climate space nonsense. That, that's actually the real answer. Like, no, I don't think all more food categories winter are storms, Like now we have a heat wave in like three parts of the country. That's going to destroy I'm, I'm calling fake news on that. I think that's just an easy thing to say, to, to say that we should allocate resources. I need to see data that f- egg prices are affected by I don't climate think, change. So if you think about eggs, right? It's chickens. <laughs> they hatch eggs. Yeah. And you deliver them to a grocery store. Okay. So chickens why- can fucking lay eggs in any temperature. I don't know if that's true. And if, if the distribution channel, meaning like juices and drinks, why is that up 19%? I also think, uh, brands and retailers, Baby food and formula up 4.6%. That's nothing to do with climate change. It's fully manufactured product. They're taking advantage of the consumer because they know they're that's spending. my point is that like the inflation is not all fucking climate change. No, no, no. I, I said like, the core eggs, wheat, flour, beef, chicken, all that stuff the, definitely is affected by climate change. I, I'll tell you two areas where I wouldn't mind the government intervening to solve inflation. And this, this, is, this will be my, the socialist in me. I think you should nationalize car insurance. The government provides the car insurance. Health insurance is too controversial. Right, you're never going to get buy-in on that because it's home insurance and car insurance. How about those two things? Home insurance in California and Florida are impossible to obtain right now, and so fucking expensive. Right. So many people cannot buy a home because they cannot get it insured. Look, I'm all for helping the average person. That's why I'm a wokey. But I don't. Your girl ain't promoting any policies about that. I don't think either one is. Trump doesn't give a fuck. That's why we like him. At least he's being honest. I don't give a fuck. I just want the stock market to rip. We're okay with that. At least he's being honest. He does not give a shit about everyone. Yeah. Don't fake that you do. That's that's the key. Look, I, I get what you're saying. And I think it's just hard to legislate. Even if you do care. If you're one of the two candidates. Because you have... Pet two services is up 7%. Pet services. That's a... Laundry and dry cleaning up five points. I'm telling you, we just injected too much fucking cash into our economy. This is why if I was, if I was Jerome Powell, I would not cut interest rates. Zero percent chance. September, October, November, December. Let the economy figure itself out. Do not cut. 
That is my advice. That's your advice, but he's cutting. Okay. I just think he shouldn't. Yeah. No, I'm just saying if we were to do predictive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, he's cutting. I, I said he was not going to cut the first half of this year in December. I knew he was not going to cut. But you know, he's cutting now. Yeah, now he has no choice. I think because they're starting to, there's too much pressure, outside pressure. I don't think these people can actually be independent. I actually thought the um, All In guys did a great job of explaining the economy. I don't know if you listened to the last episode. Maybe. What did they say? Basically saying you have two different parts of the economy. You have the industrial part, which is struggling massively. I think Friedberg said this. And then you have the software and tech people that can just cut jobs and increase earnings. Yeah. But if you actually talk about real labor, there's a massive problem yeah. in all these different industries. And so just because we all follow tech, you actually have to look at the real economy and the real economy is actually suffering, but yeah. tech is fine. And so you have this magnificent seven that keeps printing cash, yeah. but the real economy is actually suffering. And I thought that was a really good take Yeah. and why they, they predicted two things. They, I think they predicted that um, a recession was either here or already here. Yeah. Like if you look at the private economy. I said that. I said that recession. I know a recession's here already. The numbers are just being manipulated. It's just the, the stock market shows seven companies. Yeah. And those seven companies are going to be fine no matter what. Yeah. And those seven companies make so much cash that it can lift an entire index. That's all it is. Yeah. They're just so efficient that it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, I thought it was a really good take. I, I listened to their pod yeah, over I mean, the weekend. I mean, they, those guys are not in the economy the way that I am. We are in a fucking recession. I have massive companies I'm talking to every single day. They're struggling. They're down. And the, 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 the thing is, similar to 08, I just said this like 25 minutes ago. Real economy is going to suck. The stock market's going to rip. Yeah. It'll just, yeah, it'll be a blip and then continue on. It's not a surprise, but don't worry, everyone. Everyone's favorite organization, the World Health Organization, just declared global emergency today for monkeypox. Mm. How do you feel about that? I mean, I don't give a fuck one thing World Health Organization has to say. I do not trust them. They've lost some, uh, I do. I are people getting monkey pox in Africa? 100%. I believe that. And is it spreading? I believe that too. I do not want anything else out of that dumbass organization. And by the way, what are you going to do about it? You can't do anything about it. It is going to spread from animals to humans. It's, it's spreading. It's a virus. What are you going to do? You're going to lock down all of Africa? No. Are they going to ban flights? No. You're not going to do anything. So what's the emergency? You're going to, what, uh, Moderna and Pfizer and Eli Lilly get to come up with a vaccine? Are you going to take it? Am I taking a monkeypox vaccine? Yeah, it's coming. Wasn't, what was the vaccine that um, existed? Are you taking the monkeypox vaccine? No, no, I'm curious. I forget because I remember being in West Hollywood and there was a vaccine that was given to the largely gay population. And I don't remember the disease. And if you went to that West Hollywood park that we both go to, yeah. people were lined up taking the vaccine. Was it monkeypox? I remember. It was like 22. 2022? Yeah. Post-COVID. Post-COVID, there was a line of people. Well, this is when they were just pummeling down any vaccine. But... It, for whatever reason, it affected the gay population. I don't remember. Google says LA Public Health administered 200 monkeypox vaccinations at WeHo Pride Street Fair. And so it was yeah, monkeypox. there it is. So they were early on it. So you're not going to take monkeypox vaccine? Um, I, I think I'm a pretty healthy individual that has good antibodies. So you're just going to... Anna, how do you have uh, monkeypox antibodies? I was at the West Hollywood Park, probably got infected. Well, if it was infecting the gay population, that would be interesting <laughs> that it affected you. What were you doing at that bathroom park? <laughs> I did not use the bathroom. <laughs> Great bathroom, by the way. 
I would argue that is because that is not the city of Los Angeles, the city of West Hollywood. That is the single best bathroom in a public facility in all of Los Angeles. Incredible swimming pool too. That's public. Oh, I didn't know it was open. It's so nice. I mean, I've seen it. I just didn't know it was open. Yeah, it was open in 22. We used uh, to take Vivian there. That's great. Yeah. Love West Hollywood. Um, but whatever. We've got a monkeypox thing. It's going to be spreading all over the world. Fear next week. Vaccine in two weeks. I don't weeks. think the fear. I think no people one cares. are over the fear. Yeah. You could say anything. Because <laughs> Ebola, no one cared about that. There was bird flu. No one cared about that. This These guys are trying to conjure up something to get fear. I don't think anyone's going to care. Yeah. If I had to guess. The lesions look creepy. I, I looked it up. It's pretty scary looking. I don't want any lesions. Yeah. It's not good. But, you know, if you start showing up in New York City or, you know, Chicago. I mean, you're the biggest carrier. You travel to every country in the world. Yeah, I'm a big carrier. Didn't feel good the last two days. <laughs> um, all right, moving on. Huge acquisition. Mars Food Company. Everyone's favorite candy bars. I am just shocked. So Kelanova just got acquired by Mars for $36 billion. They did $13 billion in sales. They make um, snack brands and food brands like... Um, um, egg, Eggo waffles. They make um, Cheez-Its. Um, this is basically a spinoff of Kellogg, which um, took their snack brands and um, plant-based brands under Kellanova. It, g given kind of the outlook for... Um, you know, Ozempic, things of that nature. For Mars to take a bet on this huge food brand is really interesting because there are some, call it healthier options. They have RX Bar, they have Nutrigrain, um, and Mars already owns Kind Bar. Do they think this line of snack foods is going to be the new wave? Or do they think that like, the impact of Ozempic and Magovi and Manjuro or and just 36 billion is a large number. <laughs> it's big. It's big dollars. I know the Mars family is insanely rich. Yeah. Like they have a massive family office. They're so rich and they're private. And I guess the only version of this that it makes like, sense they for them. Pringles and cheese it. Do you believe just like anecdotally, the Pringles and Cheez-Its is going to be bigger 25 years from now. Probably. I, I'll tell you, like, uh, we were driving back from Santa Barbara. We stopped at a gas station. Amanda got Flaming Hot Cheetos. She's a very healthy girl that yeah. works out five days a week. I know, but, like, if you, if, if you assume... That was for you guys. That was like a treat or whatever. But I'm saying like the same consumption. It's similar to so, some of the stats that were shared in a group chat around drinking, like how it's basically 18 to 35. It's like plummeting for young men, specifically young men yep. because of cannabis, because of shrooms, shroom, whatever. whatever, all these other options that they're not take, not taking substances. Yeah. There's all there's rotating. Yeah. Well, there, I think there's new things that are easier to access now. And the, I, I do think as little as it may be, there is, I, I can actually see a shift towards even moderately healthier options than the previous generation. Like, I don't think it's going to be some huge shift where like, instead of eating McDonald's five times a week, it goes to zero. But I think a McDonald's can go to four times and the fifth could be, Chipotle, which is viewed as a salad. Yeah, I, I, I think the health and wellness, if you look on social media, it's over-indexed because most people still aren't healthy. Yeah. So it seems like everyone's cold plunging, saunaing and working out and doing muscle. Oh, that's like a bubble thing. The amount of people that actually do that 
It's, it's very like one percent. Yeah, it's not even. And so I think most people are eating Cheez-Its and Pringles and yeah. So I Cheetos. do. I just think if you just look at GLP one drugs and the impact, that's of, the only thing that could. That's change why it. I just uh, if I was Mars, I'd be acquiring so the eat generic one, patent for fucking GLP one. They'll drugs. eat one flaming hot Cheetos, not three, because <laughs> normally they eat every day. That's my point. Is I think I think I think the overall the only bet that you could make is the rest of the world catches up that they can afford Pringles now. Or they could afford GLP-1 drugs, which gives a cascading effect. So I also, I mean, I've obviously never used any of these, but like I've heard it doesn't make you feel great. It doesn't make you feel great if you eat and drink like shit. It does make, you're fine if you eat. Like that. if you don't eat. No. It's an appetite suppressant, right? But I've heard it causes nausea. It causes like, there are side effects where if you're like typically eating Cheez-Its and Doritos, you're going to be like, I don't like this. Um, yeah. I, I think if you're famous, it makes a lot of sense. So like. No, I think if you're obese, it makes a lot of sense. No, no, of course. But like, did you see the Drewski Michael Rubin? Uh clip that went viral today it yeah. was actually really funny they were uh in the fanatics office and drewski's like a bigger dude yeah mike rubin's now like super skinny yeah and they like put on patriots gear and they were like kind of like playing football whatever they had the pads on yep. and he just goes oh that all all that manjuro i'm gonna get you <laughs> Uh, that's a juicy set. Yeah. So I don't know if that's what Ruben was on, but Ruben's on something. He he's talked about it on his podcasts. Um, but I think if you're a front facing person, you care deeply about your appearance. Yeah. I don't know if the average person cares deeply about their appearance. No, but it's just it's just a pure health issue. Agree, but most people twenty million think, people no one cared about GLP one. No one cared about their health. Yeah, but this is easy. Ago. This is you take a shot. And you're done. I know, but wouldn't they want to go to Wood Ranch? No, I think you don't. I think if that craving is suppressed, you don't. I don't want to eat at those places anymore. I used to eat like shit. Yeah, but you're not on GLB-1 drugs. I know, but I'm just saying I, I've lost the taste for that junk food that I used to love. I, it makes me sick now. I'm like nauseous when I, I eat I, it. But you're a bubble. Yeah, but I'm just saying if people You've are, learn to eat healthy and now you don't care I know, about but this the stuff. GLP one drugs will drive you down that path of maybe you don't need those foods to satisfy whatever craving you have. You have healthier options. Twenty million people. That number will be a hundred million. I think it sticks at a number that people keep rolling off. That's my prediction. I think it gets to a hundred and I think everyone's gonna be on it. Whether it's effective for everyone. So but people enjoy eating. Yeah. But they enjoy eating those that awesome blossom at Chili's that's not banned. existing. I know. But they used to. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Like, don't, don't, don't you enjoy eating Taco Bell? Yeah. I like it as a treat once a year. And I'm very content with that. Twice a year. I'm happy. Like, I'm not trying to eat it. Yeah. I'm just saying, I, I think... GOP one drugs are going to be the biggest thing ever. There's no question. I think it's a trillion dollar industry globally, but I also think people roll off because they want to go back to their old habits. No, they may roll off because maybe they don't feel good or the side effects. I don't think they want to go back to eating that food. I don't think so. I, I just do not believe it. I'm not a foodie, but the people that I know that are foodies really enjoy eating their shit. Yeah, maybe. I think if you don't have it for, if you know, if you don't have it for a year, you do, your habits change. Maybe. I, I mean, I smoking. hope so. It's good for the world. Yeah. I think I, that's why I don't actually like this bet is my point for 36 billion. I'd rather buy a GLP one generic or something, or I'd rather invest and hedge my bet in GLP one. If I was Mars, that's, that's my feeling. Um, and other big news that actually moved stock prices insanely Yep, was the Starbucks CEO, our beloved Indian got fired. Yep. And they then poached the CEO of Chipotle, Brian Nickel. 
And Starbucks stock went up, what, 20%? 22%. And Chipotle went down? Like 14%. I've never seen a CEO hire and firing had this much impact. Yeah, so it was a $20 billion increase for Starbucks. And then Chipotle, you know, you could extrapolate. I don't understand why it's a $20 billion increase from this one fucking guy. Unless people thought Lakshman, who's the CEO of Starbucks... Is that bad? Is that bad? And I know the Chipotle CEO, so I have a little inside baseball on this. So I've talked about this in the pod. I'm invested in a company called Hyphen, which is an automation that's going to be launched in Chipotle. Chipotle. And apparently they were blindsided by this. So I was watching CNBC the morning when this announced, which I think was yesterday. And apparently this Brian Nickel guy is incredible. No, he's a star. He's a legend. He's in, a star. In consumer and, and retail and food. And th- they stole him, right? So this, they must have paid him through the fucking nose. And think about how covert it must have been. Yeah. Because if the Starbucks board is meeting with the Chipotle CEO, like yeah. how'd that happen? Yeah. And no did one they, knew about take, it. Like, Zooms? What they what do you think they did? No, good old fashioned in person. You think they just like went to Wyoming and just met up and said, Hey, yeah. Here's a package. Here's we a want package. You. I mean, kudos to Starbucks board. Twenty billion in value. Like that's an incredible board. They added real value to the company overnight. Yeah, they twenty billion dollars? And honestly, it's like a Pretty big opportunity. I know the COO stepped in as the interim CEO, so they'll find someone new, I think. Who? A CEO of Chipotle. Oh, yeah. And the company's, like, on fire. Chipotle, Chipotle yeah. is. And now we'll see how important the CEO is. I think he set the tone. Like, I, I'm not worried about Chipotle. Starbucks is the company that's been in flux the last two years. And really because Asia is a disaster for them. China has just collapsed. Yep. They're, they're very reliant on China. I think they have 14% down in sales in China. Um, but the thing that went viral was my man Lakshman gave Indians a bad name because he just said in an interview that he, if you're going to bother him after 6 p.m., it better be damn important. Yeah, it's a ridiculous statement. For the CEO of Starbucks, this is not... The dry cleaner down the street. Yeah. I get it. The family owned dry cleaner, the mom or dad that runs the business says, you know what? After six, I want to be left alone. I wake up early. This motherfucker, you're on call 24 hours a day. I don't know anyone that actually has any business interest that wouldn't take a call at night. If there's money, I take every call. Of course. Stupid. That's why he's fired. Yeah. Bye. I, you, you had a funny statement about uh, tech Indian CEOs versus consumer Indian CEOs. Yeah, I think that's a big thing. Consumer Indians have yet to prove themselves because the Pepsi CEO. Indra. She, and she got canned. Lakshman's canned. The other consumer one we have is Chanel. CEO. She's a woman. Oh, wow. She's Indian. That's a big one. Like if Chanel gets What about our boy Anish? <laughs> yeah. He's a consumer CEO. A consumer Indian. <laughs> Anish, you gotta give you us gotta, a, you gotta you gotta carry the flag. Yeah. You know like how uh Tom Cruise yeah. jumped off the plane with yeah. the flag? He's yeah. Anish, you're a guy. Yeah. So Anish for uh context is the CEO of LVMH North America yeah. and a very senior person in LVMH corporate. Yeah. He's consumer Indian. Consumer Indians got to re, <laughs> you know, they got to rehype their name up here because uh, Lakshman really took them all out to the uh, shed here. Um, very interesting to see how they all pan out. Um, moving on. I thought this is a very interesting. Axios did a article called Dating App Existential Crisis. Mm-hmm. So Bumble stock went down 30% last week. Yep. And a big part of it was di- huge dip in users. Um, and there's like no growth areas. Yep. And so. Across big, all apps, right? Tinder. Tinder, Bumble. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, I don't think people have kind of 
put their finger on what the problem is because the analysts that were listening to it, they said when they ran through the list of items that they think they need to address or improve, it's everything is one of the analysts said, because I think, you know, that this market has gotten so mature is what they, they believe that there's not so much left. And so I think the interesting thing becomes what is happening culturally that has lost these apps maybe have lost some momentum. Like, are they as popular with the same group of people like demographic wise, obviously people that use the app 10 years ago, they are either married or they moved on or whatever. They're probably yeah, there's using- a roll off. Yeah. Yeah. There's roll off, huge roll off. And so I'm curious to see is if you're in, you've gone through that phase of dating apps. Do you revert back to the mean and you go back to meeting people the way you did 20 years ago? There's probably two things. I think I was already in a serious relationship before dating app started. So I never got to experience it. Yeah. Same. So from what I've heard over the past handful of years is that it's a pretty low quality of experience meaning the people you meet, it's not, I think there was like a burst of like, just everyone just hooking up yeah. off these real, uh, apps. And that was like a fun thing to do, whatever. And now it's become pretty stale from what I've heard from anecdotally from like people that are single and especially of people my age, like yeah. none of them use dating apps anymore. They're yeah. just like, they've given up. And Josh, do people in your age group use dating apps? They use Hinge. I've seen. I don't use them personally. I rather just talk to girls. Yeah, but. yeah. So yeah, it could be a reversion to the mean. Like I, yeah. I also he, he went on my hot take. What I think is killing dating apps: politics. I think a ton of young men have become conservative. Mm-hmm. I think young women are liberal or very liberal. And in these ecosystems, people are sharing their political views and or judging you by how the way you look and how you may lean. And you may not even give that person a shot. Like you may see a girl or a guy and say, eh, they're not politically aligned with me. And you don't even take them out. Or I think people just conversely just are okay being alone. Because well, I mean, we, we see fertility rates are down. Yeah. People aren't having kids. Marriage rates are down. Everything's down in terms of what a relationship's supposed to be. Yeah. So that could be a reflection of why dating apps are less popular. Yeah, but they still want to have sex. Do they? I mean... The, the numbers are down. Like they'd rather not have sex. Yes. That's like... You can look at any well, public I don't know data. That, I mean, they're not having children, yes, but are they? There's birth control, there's condoms, there's a lot of reasons why you don't have kids. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think people have also just become, I think COVID was probably a big reason. You just spend so much time by yourself. You're just you like, do. fuck it. Yeah. I'm okay being alone. I think that's a thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... I think because it like fell off a cliff post COVID. It was not this 2019. What dating apps were still like accelerating. Yeah, but dating apps is one segment. People getting married is another segment. People having children is another segment. Like there are people now getting married and not having kids. There's people that don't want to get married and don't have kids. There's people that don't want to get married and have kids. Yeah. Like there's just so many different permutations of what normal looks like today so i think i don't think it matters there's no like um there's very less little societal expectations of what your adult life should look like now right like a lot of people are taking the route of not getting married and not having kids or whatever they're choosing that path but i'm just finding it interesting they're not hooking up Look, you got to ask the boys. 
I know the, what the boys are the doing. The boys are hooking up. Bo- boys are at least trying. They're trust me. I see them. They're out there trying. They're, 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 they might be a unique cohort. No, they're like regular twenty-something-year-old guys. They're horny and they're just trying to get <laughs> laid every weekend. I would. I would love to pull your office. Uh-huh. Who every weekend is trying to have sex? Most of them are single. They're young. Yeah. They're not married. I have no idea. I can't ask that question. <laughs> Maybe I can. Yeah. Should I do a poll? I definitely can. Should we do a group that. chat TikTok? I'd probably get fucking sued <laughs> through the fucking brain. Group chat TikTok. I'll yeah. do it. Um, all right. Moving on. You know, give us some feedback in the in the comments. I'm curious. Winners, losers, content. Who's your winner of the week? Winner, Dallas Cowboys. They haven't won a Super Bowl since the 90s, and they're worth $10 billion, apparently. And it's just a reflection how everything in the NFL just goes up. This is a team that is the America's team, but they haven't won in, you know, 27 years, I believe. They don't even make the conference championships, but somehow they are the flavor of America. They don't even have a quarterback they want to give an extension to. They have a receiver holding out. All these different things, but it doesn't matter. Everyone loves the Cowboys. It's that era in the 90s that is, it's like putting out, like you put out this like quintessential piece of music. You're good forever. You had a run in the 90s that today's like boomer, boomer mean, call it any 40 plus year old. Yep. Male Dallas Cowboys is weaved into the fabric of their youth. Yeah, because it, it's funny. Like uh, on the Pat McAfee show, he he talks about how do you get ratings? You talk about LeBron and yeah. you talk about the Cowboys. Yeah, he goes, you open with either one of those, you well, get you ratings. Mean, look at first take. All the whole thing is <laughs> either Jerry Jones or LeBron. Yes, literally, they don't even talk about Kevin. They talk about Jerry Jones. Yeah, it's insane. Done an incredible job. It's great marketing. Great marketing. And he bought it for like pennies. So good for the Jones uh, inheritance. Yeah, because I think his kids are now involved with the team, right? Yeah. A few more weeks of football. 24 days, 23 days. Wow. Um, winner of the week for me is there is probably the world's worst hack that just happened. Where all of the data, this is insane, by the way. Um, basically, all of the data of, I think, every single person in America, social security data has been hacked. And it's now publicly on marketplaces for sale. Mm. The good news is it's everyone. So all of our social security numbers are available? Yes. Address, social security. I mean, it's literally the biggest news in the world at the moment because it's in the black market. You can access this information now. I know they always say social security is like the one thing you need to protect. What can you do with your social security? I don't use it for anything. What's that? Credit cards. That's You can apply for credit cards. So my suggestion is, is, and this is unfortunately going to cost us all money, but you got to monitor your credit and you have to find a way to keep track of making sure that like nobody's opening up credit cards under your name. Is that the only thing? Apply for loans, credit cards. I guess cards. apartment leases. Yeah. You can just say like, oh, this is my... Yeah. And you get someone else's If you else's have the credit. address to this, to this, to this, you can make fake ID, fake everything, go... Apply for anything. But won't you get evicted from the house apartment if you don't pay your rent? Uh, maybe a good credit will get you an apartment. Yeah, you get 30 days. Oh, no, what do you mean? You can't evict anyone. California, you know how long it takes to kick someone out? Months, years sometimes. Or you could just 2.9 billion records have been stolen. That's the new nuclear weapon is cyber warfare. Not hot. Not hot at all. But at least it's everyone. We're all in it together. Loser of the week. Loser, Kim Kardashian. Okay. She just launched a podcast called Group Chat. You motherfuckers. 
Like, what are you doing? Those guys steal everything from you. And it's, yeah. We need to sue them. We can. If it, trademark law is first use. We've been yeah. doing it for eight years. We're, we're on chat with drama to see. <laughs> we should sue them. We should sue Kim Kardashian and Christian. Sue Jenner. them for $5 billion. Like, don't even, so you can make the news. Yeah, you'll make, we'll be bigger. Yeah. It'll just be like group chat podcast is suing the Kardashians for $5 billion. Yeah. They definitely have seen our podcast. They don't keep, she's like, I can trample these Indians all day. Yeah. Fuck you, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so I, I think we should sue them. We should sue them. Uh, yeah. We need to get our lawyer. On the I think it'll be funny. It's good content. Good content. At least, uh, what, what are we going to settle for? Like a skims care package? <laughs> <laughs> we can get that either way. <laughs> Just like some underwear and some t-shirts. <laughs> Oh my god. Definitely post that on TikTok. Yeah. We should sue them though. Why not? If the TikTok gets enough views, we should sue them. All right. Um my loser of the week is uh Google. I think mm. Google is just getting dunked on yeah. every single which way. They have an antitrust case against them regarding their relationship with Apple being the default search engine for iPhones. They have a bias issue in their search results. They kind of completely shit the bed on AI. I mean, someone showed uh, that Twitter account and wokeness showed the Google, Google AI's search results for s German soldiers in 1943. And they have a black guy and an Asian woman. Google's in trouble. So, the DOJ has talked about breaking them up yeah. today. That was uh, yeah. really a disaster. I, I don't get how they could just unravel. So I was thinking about it. I don't think they're going to break them up. No, they're not. They're not going to do anything. I think what's happened is most of their employees are pretty much legacy employees well eric schmidt he's, you saw his yeah, he video them. we just said their work from home they don't care about winning it's a loser culture yeah so so many people in google because of the monopoly on search made so much money in the last 15 to 20 years yeah that they're just lazy yeah i think that's the real issue like when your stock goes from like 100 billion to 3 trillion or whatever their number is right yeah. now yeah you don't have the motivation. They give six months sabbatical to go bike riding. Yeah. You can go bike around the country yeah. if you've been there for eight years. Yeah. So, how, and these are all smart people. Yeah. They just got lazy. Yeah. That's all it is. And I think the work from home did have an impact on their business. Like you're, you don't have to do anything. They aren't doing it. They're biking. Yeah. And they're probably not in shape as a company. No, I would guess not. That's my loser. Um, content. Um, Adam Sandler was on Joe Rogan. Incredible. I saw some clips. It looks really funny. It's great. Yeah. He's so cool. Yeah, he's great. He's epic. And, and I've only met him once. And it was after like the California Strong baseball thing yeah. we did. We were at uh, Cafe Abana in Malibu. And I was just standing with Mav. He was probably like five months at the time. And Sandler just came up, played with my kid, yeah. and we watched 45 minutes of NFL playoff football. Nicest guy in the world. Yeah. He didn't have to do that. He's a legend. I mean, he made the best movies of our childhood. Um, all right. My content, um, I was looking for a movie the other night on Netflix. I found a movie called Queen Pins. Okay. Unbelievable. What's it about? It's about two women that run a coupon scam and generate millions of dollars. And Vince Vaughn is in it as like the police character for the post office. It's, uh, it's so funny. It's great. That's it's right up your alley. It's right up my alley. It was great. I think Kirsten Dunst. No. Bell. Bell. Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Yeah. There's also, it ends with us movie that came out. With Blake a lot Lively. of uh, controversy around that. Why? 
Um, it's just everywhere. Something about Blake being a mean girl, the producer is an abuser. It's, some, it's just like, it's all bad. Really? Yeah, all bad. A lot of bad press. I didn't press. see any of it. I, 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 got, I was reading about it today. And then the morning show, I see ads everywhere. Yeah. The movie, the show. The show. It's back. It's coming back. I don't know I, when. I love it. Like, I was in Century City Mall and I saw literally every ad. Oh, good. It was I'm morning excited. show. All right, Kathy's. Um, we will see you here back on Sunday. Have a great, great weekend. Peace. Peace.